Hello everyone. Jack wants to welcome you back to the Jack Burst. And Jack is so glad you're back because Jack has an awful lot to say to you. That's right. I'm Jack and I'm talking in the third person. Why? Because it's cool and because everyone likes it. And those of you out there that don't like it, you don't because you just don't get it. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Jack Wallen. Welcome back to the Jack First. It has been too long. Now, you might be wondering why in the world I was just talking to you in the third person. Well, because today's episode of the Jack Verse is brought to you by Perspective. And that is not an insurance company. I have recently had a reader uh, contact me and ask me about my take on perspectives. Uh, and, I, and I also have found that some readers don't particularly like a, per, a certain type of perspective. So I want to address that right now. What is perspective? Perspective is pretty much in, in the medium of books. Perspective is whose eyes you are looking through as you read. The two main perspectives are first person and third person. First person perspective is you reading a book through the eyes of a character. And third person perspective is you reading the book through the eyes of an omniscient narrator. There's also like there's also first person present tense and first person past tense and third person present blah 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 blah. blah. Okay. I don't want to go into the the dirty nitty-gritty of it. Now if you've read enough of my books, you've probably picked up on my shtick, my take on perspective. Um, unlike a lot of writers who choose a perspective and stick with it, I switch. Before you go running away, go at pulling your hair out and screaming, I can't do that. Let me explain. The way I view perspectives is perspective is very simple. With first-person perspective, reading the book through the eyes or the mind of the character, I am able to give you a very intimate and emotionally connected take on the world around the character. Okay? That is because you're reading the book through the eyes of the character. You can feel and, and sense what's going on with that character. Now, with third-person perspective, it allows me, as a writer, to flex my more poetic and more descriptive muscles. Because, let's just say, for example, I'm writing a book, uh, um, and the main character is somewhat simplistic uh, and, and doesn't have a gigantic vocabulary. So, if I'm doing first-person perspective on that, that character's vocabulary is going to be limited, and maybe their worldview will be a bit smaller than a third-person omniscient perspective. So, what I do with my books is I relegate first-person perspective to the protagonist, and then I allow third-person perspective for the antagonist and the other bits and pieces. Why? Because I typically want the readers to be able to have an intimate and immediate connection to the, to the protagonist of the story. I can't imagine writing uh, the iZombie series, which uh, Bethany is the, Bethany Nichimi is the main character. I cannot imagine writing that through third person only because it wouldn't allow me as a writer to give you intimate details on what Bethany thinks and feels. And yet, at the same time, by tossing third person into there so I can um, g give you this great overview uh, of the Zero Day Collective, it doesn't allow me to, to expand the world and, and use a little bit more poetic license with the description and the verbiage. 
So, I, I've, and I've been doing that for quite some time. In fact, the very first, first book I wrote, A Blade Away, first person perspective for the protagonist and third person perspective for the antagonist. Third person perspective is really good, at least from my point of view, uh, for bad guys. Because it allows the narrator to to go into the past and talk about the present. It's just a more flexible point of view. It's not as intimate, though, or immediate, but it works for so many things. Now, I know a lot of readers or some readers don't much care for first-person perspective because... And, and this is not a slight on anybody, but first-person perspective kind of forces you as a reader to experience what the character is experiencing, good or bad. And some readers don't want to dive that deep into a character, so they prefer the more superficial third-person perspective. That's okay. Now, of course, you've got this strange kind of amalgamation that I have with Shiro, okay? I like to call the Shiro perspective to be a 3D perspective. Because, why? Because um, the narrator in Shiro is a special uh, character that I've developed and I'm very proud of that breaks the third wall, or the fourth wall. The fourth wall is that wall that stands between the story and the reader. And the narrator in Shiro breaks it. The narrator doesn't just comment on the story and the characters. The narrator also comments on the reader. So that's a very special kind of perspective that I would only ever use in Shiro because it developed as I was writing those books and has become an effective part of the storyline. You cannot have Shiro without the narrator. <laughs> Trust me, if you've read book two, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh. So perspective, it's a really important tool. In fact, it's, it's, it's like the tool that writers use um, uh, to, to, to force a story forward, be it from the, the perspective of the character or the perspective of a narrator. So that's perspective, and that's why I choose to do what I do. And every book I write, with the exception of Shiro, the Shiro series, every book I write switches back and forth between first and third person. Um, and and you, if you've read enough of them, you can pick that out, and you know exactly what's going on. There you go. Now, I don't want to just talk about that, because I have announcements to make. Some really cool and awesome and wonderful announcements. First and foremost, TikTok girl, uh, a week away, July the 10th. Wind your clocks, babies. The second book in the Clockwork Movement series will be released, and I cannot begin to tell you how thrilled I am about this. It, I love steampunk. Steampunk is a lush and beautiful and, and, and not only romantic, but an exciting genre that I think is really only now becoming um, part of the mainstream. And I think readers who have never experienced steampunk, I think that uh, on the little patting on the back here, I think that my series is an ideal springboard into the genre because it's not so heavy-handed with the steampunk elements. Um, it doesn't uh, dive straight into the deep waters of corsetry and crinolines, and, um, but those elements are there. Uh, this, uh, um, the Clockwork Movement series is very much about uh, um, Olivia Nightingale and Nathan Gage. Uh, they are, I think, they're exciting characters. It's, there's a lot of action. There is some romance, but it's on the light side. Um, and it's a lot of fun. I think you'll enjoy it. July the 10th, look for it. Second bit of news. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the next book in the iZombie series is about to be finished. The first draft, that is. I am about to complete, and I think it should be done sometime this week. The first draft of Fry Zombie Fry. Now, I've read a lot of books, a lot of zombie books, um, and I can tell you, uh, unbiased, of course, <laughs> yeah, right, whatever. Fry Zombie Fry 
effectively does this to you. It picks you up and it says, run, run as fast as you can in air, run, get those legs moving, get those legs moving. And once you've gotten your legs moving as fast as you can, it drops you and you take off and you run and it follows you and it follows you and it follows you and it follows you and you get to a, the point where you're about done with your run and it snatches you up from the ground. <laughs> it's a ride and you're going to love it. It's probably so far with the iZombie series, it might well be my favorite that I've written. Mmm, gotta love that. I love the fact that I've written, I think, eight books in that series, and I'm still as pumped up about it as I am. I can't wait. I cannot wait to unleash this on you. I think you're going to love it. I think you're going to read it and say, how in the world can you keep going with this? But I'm going to. I promise you. The iZombie series will have to be pulled away from my cold, dead hands. <laughs> anyway, thank you again for coming to the Jackverse. I hope you've enjoyed this little trip into my mind. There will be more. I promise I will not let another lapse go where you don't get to play along with me in my world, in Jack's world. Hey, it's the Jack. What more do you want? Third person, baby.